Welcome aboard History Aficionados to your gateway to the past on the Daily History Podcast. Prepare to set sail on a thrilling journey as we explore the swashbuckling tales of the golden age of piracy, tales of treasure and treachery. Join us for the next 20 minutes as we navigate through the treacherous waters of historical myths and truths. Our odyssey begins with the dawning of the golden age of piracy, a tumultuous period stretching from the late 1600s to the early 1700s, a time when the sea became a stage for unrivaled lawlessness and infamous marauders set their sails to fortune and infamy. It was an age where horizons were limitless, and the rule of law was often outpaced by the rule of the sword. But what winds propelled this age of rebellion on the high seas? To grasp this rise in piracy, one must first look at the backdrop of European conflict, most notably the Spanish War of Succession. From 1701 to 1714, this struggle for the Spanish throne embroiled multiple maritime powers in a prolonged conflict, dispersing naval forces across the globe and leaving trade routes vulnerable. As Peace of Utrecht concluded the war, scores of naval seamen found themselves unemployed, their pockets empty, and their futures uncertain. This perfect storm of seasoned sailors without a flag, combined with poorly patrolled waters, fueled a bold wave of piracy. Fertile hunting grounds were aplenty, as merchant ships, heavy with booty from the New World, sailed homeward with diminished protection. The lure of easy prey was irresistible. It wasn't long before the decrease in naval patrols became synonymous with the surge in piracy, with pirates forging a brutal dominion over the sea lanes. An empire upon the waves was rising, paved with treachery, blood, and gold, marking the dawn of the Pirate Age. Plunging back into the churning waters of our nautical narrative, we stir the echoes of the brine to resurrect the specters of the sea's most infamous buccaneers. Today, our spotlight shines on three towering figures whose notorious legacies have transcended time. Blackbeard, Anne Bonny, and Calico Jack. Let's hoist the Jolly Roger and embark with the fearsome Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard. His appellation comes from the imposing figure he cut with his braided ebony beard and smoldering fuses tied into his hair. Commanding the Queen Anne's Revenge, a frigate brandishing 40 guns, Blackbeard terrorized the American colonies and the West Indies around 1716 to 1718. Tales of his cruelty precede him, like the grim saga where he shot his own lieutenant, saying, if I do not kill one of you now and then, you'll forget who I am. But his reign of fear culminated in a dramatic battle at Ocracoke Inlet, where Lieutenant Robert Maynard finally brought him down, ending the formidable pirate's reign and sending his severed head to Virginia as a warning. The seas grew even wilder with the tempestuous Anne Bonny who cast off the shackles of societal norms. It's said she was born in Ireland around 1697, the daughter of a lawyer and his servant, which started her life amidst scandal. Not one to be fettered by a petticoat, Anne donned breeches and cutlasses with a fierce disposition. Adrift in a man's world, she became the consort of Captain Calico Jack Rackham and may have even commandeered ships herself. Her legend swells with stories of fiery battles and a ruthless heart that showed no quarter. And who could unfold the map of maritime marauders without marking the name John Rackham or Calico Jack as he was known by his distinctive striped attire? Taking the helm of the pirate sloop the William in the year of 1720, his claim to fame was not just his piracy, but his association with the two most influential female pirates of the age, Anne Bonny and Mary Reed. Together, they carved a legend in the sands of time, though Rackham's own legacy would be overshadowed by that of his formidable female counterparts. His tale came to an abrupt end when a pirate hunter seized the William and Calico Jack, along with most of his crew, were hanged in Jamaica, sealing his fateful chapter in the annals of piracy. The exploits and personas of these seafaring scoundrels whet our appetite for adventure, and speak to some primal yearning for the untamed and unknown. The allure of their lives, arrayed in daring deeds and defiance, has cast them not as mere outlaws, but as icons of freedom and rebellion.
Our modern sensibilities are captivated by their audacity in the face of stalwart empires and the perilous whispers of the unknown stretching beyond the horizon. The pirate legends of Blackbeard, Anne Bonny, and Calico Jack beckon us to look closely at the line between history and mythology, a line as elusive and shifting as the tides themselves. In this inquiry into the shadows cast by the notorious figures of the sea, we untangle facts from fiction, seeking the truths that lie buried beneath the layers of legend. Tales of their adventures continue to ripple through the seas of stories, showing us that the golden age of piracy has never truly faded. It merely awaits the next tide to be retold and romanticized anew. Now, did pirates really bury their treasure? Accounts like Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island suggest so, but in reality, that was a rarity. Pirates preferred spending or trading their loot promptly, for living life on the edge hardly allows for retirement plans. And what about walking the plank? Contrary to popular belief, most disputes on pirate ships were likely settled through more, shall we say, direct means. Let's navigate further into their code, an actual set of rules which governed the conduct among pirates. Contrary to their lawless reputation, pirates adhered to a strict code, which included articles about the distribution of loot, compensation for injury, and even the prohibition of fighting among the crew. These regulations ensured some semblance of order aboard a vessel where mutiny and deceit could easily fester. Within this code lay the rules of divide and conquer, well, mostly divide. Spoils were split according to rank, but even the lowliest of pirates received a share. Captains and quartermasters might receive up to five shares, not exactly equitable, but more so than on many merchant ships. Every man had a vote in important decisions, a democratic twinkle in the otherwise dark eye of piracy. And what about their daily grind? Life aboard was far from the swashbuckling adventure novels depict. The average buccaneer's day included mundane tasks such as cleaning the deck, maintaining the rigging, and standing watch. These tasks were crucial to keep their floating fortresses seaworthy in preparation for the next prize, the capture of a merchantman heavy with cargo. As our journey through the day-to-day -day of buccaneers sails to a close, remember these were not just rogues of legend, but real people bound by rules, routines, and the relentless pursuit of freedom and fortune. As we chart our course away from the myths and into the truths, picture the real world of the pirates, one filled with as much order as it was with chaos. As the sails billowed above and cannons readied below, pirates near and far knew that dominance at sea was not just about the treasure, it was about wit and cunning strategy. The infamous Captain Bartholomew Roberts, known as Black Bart, captured over 400 ships in his pirating career, and his tale epitomizes the cleverness of pirate warfare. In 1720, off the coast of West Africa, Roberts rendered his ship indistinguishable by disguising it as a Portuguese slave ship. As a richly laden French warship approached, Roberts' ruse allowed him to draw near without suspicion, and in a fierce and swift attack, he claimed one of his greatest prizes. Treasure abounded in the age of piracy, and the tales of legendary loot still capture our imaginations today. The Spanish treasure fleet of 1622 found its doom at the hands of a hurricane, and the pirates found their golden opportunity. Among them, the most famous treasure was aboard the Nuestra Señora de Atocha, a galleon that sank with an unfathomable bounty. Rumors of its riches quickly spread across the seven seas, calling to any and all daring enough to defy the depths for wealth beyond measure. It remained lost until treasure hunter Mel Fisher found it in 1985, confirming its place in the annals of maritime legend. Yet, the life of a pirate was a constant dance with danger, a game of cat and mouse played with naval powers. Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard, was the embodiment of this perilous existence. With his flagship, the Queen Anne's Revenge, he blockaded the port of Charleston in 1718, successfully ransoming its citizens. But such audacity drew the attention of authorities. Later that year, when Lieutenant Robert Maynard confronted him off the coast of North Carolina, the legendary Blackbeard met his demise in a ferocious battle, 
marking the end of his reign on the seas. This constant tension with the law was the unsung driving force behind the pirates' life, as much as the gold they stole or the waters they roamed. As the golden age of piracy began to wane, several critical factors contributed to the decline of these once fearsome rulers of the ocean waves. The allure of a pirate's life dimmed in the face of a changing world. By the early 18th century, the golden sun that had risen on piracy started to set, painting a starkly different picture from the one that had once drawn so many to the Jolly Roger. Central to the decline was the concerted effort of nations to reclaim the seas. Increased naval patrols, reflecting the sophistication and might of empires like Britain and Spain, began to cut through the pirates' dominions with powerful warships. These patrols were more organized, better equipped, and had a mandate to eradicate piracy at all costs. As a harbinger of globalization, international politics played a role too, with maritime laws and agreements taking shape to protect trade routes and ensure the safety of merchant vessels. Coupled with the end of the War of Spanish Succession in 1714, which restored a tenuous peace among European powers, countries could focus more on abolishing the pirate threat that disrupted global commerce. The turning of the tide saw the capture and trial of numerous pirates. Names that had once struck terror into hearts were now on trial for their lives. The likes of Blackbeard, captured and killed in 1718 near Ocracoke Island, became cautionary tales rather than inspirations for aspiring buccaneers. The 1720 trial of Calico Jack, Anne Bonny, and Mary Red marked a significant moment in pirate history, capturing the public's imagination even as it signaled the end of an era. The swift hand of justice continued to crack down, and by the 1720s, the majority of piratical activities had been quelled with legislation like the Piracy Act of 1721 broadening the legal definition and stiffening the penalties for piracy. This period etched its final entries into the annals of history with the hanging of the last known pirate of the era, Bartholomew Roberts, who met his fate at Cape Coast Castle in 1722. His death symbolized not just the end of an individual's reign, but the closure of a chapter in maritime lore. An era of high seas adventure was drawing to a close, swept away by the increasing might of naval powers and the rule of international law that still governs the sea lanes to this day. And so, dear listeners, we find ourselves navigating into the closing chapter of our odyssey through the golden age of piracy. As we glance over our shoulders at the horizon behind us, we must speak of the echoes these bygone buccaneers have cast through time into the realm of our modern culture. Let us now engage in a discourse on how the rough-and-tumble life of pirates has been distilled into a more charming and chivalrous phenomenon within popular entertainment. Gone are the days where the sight of the Jolly Roger struck fear into the hearts of seafarers. Instead, that same skull and crossbones is now a beacon of adventure and excitement in pop culture. Consider the franchise Pirates of the Caribbean, first graced the silver screen in 2003, and since then, it's been romanticizing the pirate life. These modern tales portray pirates as roguish anti-heroes, living a life of freedom on the high seas that captivates audiences worldwide. Our fascination with these swashbuckling adventurers has turned brutal outlaws like the infamous Blackbeard into the likes of Captain Jack Sparrow, a character more likely to induce laughter than terror. The question then becomes, how does this shift influence our understanding of piracy's brutal reality? The influence of piracy has indeed left an indelible mark, stretching beyond the realms of cinematic blockbusters. Literature, video games, and even theme park attractions sing a siren song of pirate adventures. And yet, this romanticization often leaves in its wake a turbulent sea of questions. Are we glorifying individuals who, historically, were criminals feared for their violence and mercenary ways? How do we reconcile our enchantment with pirate legends, with the harsh truths of their historically documented brutality and lawlessness? As we ponder these questions, it is crucial to remember that while the golden age of piracy has long since ebbed away, 
the tales and legends that sprouted from that era continue to shape our cultural perspective. Even in the 21st century, aspects of piracy infiltrate our language and idioms. Phrases like walking the plank or shiver me timbers are ingrained in our vernacular, colorful remnants of a perilous and wild time at sea. So we invite you, our listeners, to reflect upon how this history, this legacy of piracy, has been transformed and take a moment to deliberate on its implications. These romanticized echoes of piracy challenge us to dissect the past, to appreciate the allure of tales told with a touch of whimsy while understanding the darker undertones that they often mask. As the sun sets on our historic excursion, we encourage you to weigh anchor on these thoughts and steer your contemplations toward the ever-shifting tides of historical narrative versus pop culture portrayal. Thank you for cruising through history with us on the Daily History Podcast. If our tales of treachery and treasure have ignited your passion for the past, don't forget to hit subscribe and share your own voyage into history in the comments below. Share your topic suggestions for our next adventure, and if the wind favors, the one with the most likes will chart our course ahead. Until next time, keep your curiosity as your North Star, and may fair winds guide your sails.